Awesome. And then uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and share a screen while we're at it. Why not? That sounds like fun. And we'll bring up Civil 3D. All right. Welcome, everybody. My name is Brian Haley, and with me is Brian Mackey, and hopefully, eventually, Brian Tomasi. He was having some technical issues, so we're expecting him to jump back in any moment now. Um, this is Civil Chat. This is your chance to ask questions on anything civil related in the Autodesk world. Um, if you've not been with us before, we're basically a talk show where you ask questions and we answer them as best as we can. Um, if you don't ask questions, we'll talk about things like zombies and minions and who knows what else. Um, <laughs> aliens? Aliens? <laughs> aliens. Sure, why not? Uh, pull that. I'm trying to move something here real quick. So if you guys are going to ask questions, just please make sure to put them in the question and answer pod. Otherwise, yeah. feel free to heckle. Tell us we're crazy and Brian's answers make absolutely no sense in the yeah, webinar the chat pod. Fun. Have lots of fun in the chat. We we, we love the chat. Um, we have thick skin, so go for it. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's a little bit about this. Now, I always like to start off with something interesting in Civil 3D, maybe something I found recently or something I've been working on or just something I might want to share. And I thought what I would talk about today is reference templates. I think I might have talked about these a while back, but uh, I'm running out of topics, so I'm going to go ahead and start rehashing some things. So one of the issues that we had recently is we had a, a client that says, thou shalt use our standards where we have our standards. Where we don't have our standards, go ahead and use your own standards. And I'm like, okay, great. How, how do we do this? How, how do we integrate the two standards together? And so what I did is I created, a, I took a copy of our template and I made it the project template. All right, so this is the template for project, right? And so any new drawings that we start are gonna start with this template. And then I referenced in another template. Now, this, hold, hold that thought for just a moment. You're like, wait, this project has two templates? Yeah, yeah, it does. We have the template and then we have the reference template. This way, anytime you start a new drawing, your new drawing is going to have that other template already referenced into it. All right, so let me go ahead and create our template. So I, I'm just going to use our standard template. This, this is not how you should do it. You should make a copy of the template for this project. And actually, let me go ahead and do that. So let me go ahead and create a new drawing here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. All right, so this is our template. I'll just go ahead and copy it right here. And I will rename this project template.gwt. All right. So this is our project template. I misspelled it. Can't have that. All right. So this is our project template. Now, into the project template, I am then going to reference in the reference template. So again, let me go ahead and make a copy here. And we'll rename this one to reference template. Okay, great. So I, I'm actually going to, instead of uh, opening a drawing, I'm going to go ahead and open the template. So instead of creating a new drawing, we'll go ahead and open the template. So I'm going to open up the project template, and I will reference it the <coughs> reference template. All right, if you're not familiar with reference templates, I think they're pretty cool. So up here on the Manage tab, up on the ribbon, over here under Styles, we can create a reference template. Now, because this drawing is a template, it's a .dwt, not a dwg, over here to the right, we can set the reference template default. So if I go into here, I, I can choose what things it is that I want to reference into other drawings. But this is not my reference template. This is just the template. I, I would actually want to do this in the reference template. So maybe I'm not interested in the points. I can uncheck that, and I would just reference it to everything else. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave everything toggled on because this isn't being referenced into anything else. This is the template that started. But into this, I am then going to reference in my reference template. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to choose my reference template. I'll open that up. Uh, again, I can choose what it is I want to bring in. So if, if I, you know, again, didn't want to do points, I could have gone into the reference template and unchecked points, and then when I referenced it in, they wouldn't come in. But there's other things in here as well. So there's all the civil 3D settings. So there's your drawing settings and your feature settings. There's your layers. Now, these are not the 
blind settings layers, these are the layers. So if we give this a moment, and I haven't played around with the layers a whole lot, but these are the layers that are in that drawing. You can reference those in as well. Under other resources, see if I, we have blocks, textiles, line types. So I'm not interested in, say, for example, blocks. I can uncheck the blocks, and it'll show you all the blocks. Now, some of them have to be referenced in because they're used in styles. That's why I can't uncheck all of them, right? Uh, let's see what else we have here in the property sets. So we're not using property sets here, so I'm not referencing those in. I'll go ahead and select OK. And then I'm going to save this as the project template. And now every time I create a new drawing, this project template is going to have the reference template referenced in. Now, if I come over here to my settings, say, for example, surface, surface styles, you can see all of these styles were originally in this drawing. But because I referenced the same drawing into it, it made all these styles now reference styles. So if I go change the style in the reference template, it changes in this drawing as well which is absolutely fantastic because I don't know what things we need to change to match that other company's style, standards, right? Maybe we need to change fonts or textile or, or text heights or contour layers or colors or line types or all these other things. I can just now go into the reference template, change it there, and it changes in all of the drawings for that entire project. And that's the beauty of the reference template. Now, I've been playing around with the uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud, and this does work through ACC as well. So if you're using that, this does seem to work pretty spot on. So, sound like I'm in a tunnel? Yeah, I didn't notice it when we were talking in the beginning, but after you guys start, I was going to let you finish your topic and before I say, hey, you might need okay. to change headsets. Uh, <laughs> do you want me to change headsets? Let's try that. Actually, what you just did fixed it. Wait, talk again. Hello, hello, hello. Test, 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 test. Is this any better? Yeah, that, that's much better. So your Weird. big ears, your big ears or your hair, maybe? <laughs> Could be. I, I have no idea. But yeah, I, 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 I like this headset because it leaves my ear canals open. And I, they're bone conducting headsets. So they're really, really handy, especially for like walking around in the world. So you can Ironically, you sound much better with your head turned to the right. So you need to just rotate your body. And work like that. Just we just work like this for the rest of the day. Yes, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> now, now that's a pose. Strike right. a pose. <laughs> uh, is it this deal? I probably don't. Have very good deal. <laughs> Zoolander, I love it. Right. <laughs> All right. So that's that's kind of what I was got wanting to show with the uh, uh, reference template. So again, so I'll go ahead and close out of my template. I'll save it. And now, when I create a new drawing for this project. And you can incorporate this into your sheet set manager if you want to. Right, I will use that project template. And now because I created the drawing using the template that has the reference template referenced into it, all these styles are, are referenced. Yeah, and your microphone went back again. You might want to change. OK, I'll do that. Give me just a moment, folks. And while he's doing that, this is my time to tell you about our sponsor and our sponsor is you asking questions if you do not ask questions brian's just you have to hear tunnel brian talk about nothing it's bad enough he's actually talking about stuff with his tunnel vision but you might want to be asking some questions because otherwise you know we just get to sit here like you said and talk about zombies so please ask some questions and put them in that q a pod I can't find the setting. Can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, where's the setting to change your microphone? Well, you you keep it's weird because you sound better when you're doing that. <laughs> I come over here. You're not saying you sound good, but you sound better. Uh, I I don't know. I I think this might be. I know there's got to be a re place to change it. I try changing in Windows. You know, if I wouldn't have showed up just before it started and Thomas, you would have been able to hear you. We could have fixed this beforehand. Right. <laughs> uh, output, input. 
Oh, there we go. Change that. Of course, it's not changing. Can you, hear you can me? try it in Zoom, too. Yeah. Oh, well. I, I guess y'all are just going to have to suffer. You sound better than before, but okay. that's also not saying much. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to throw a, a note label in here. All right. And I'll just, just leave it as the default. So this is in, intended to, you know, right click, edit label text. I just put a note in here and I'm going to go open up the reference template because we've now decided that, Hey, something needs to change for this. So this is the drawing where all these styles are being referenced from. So if I go change that note label style and we'll just change the contents here to put in as this work, all right, save the drawing. Yes, I want to save the changes to that reference template. And now in this drawing, it will update the next time I, is it a regen? I doubt a regen will do it. I think you have to, I'm not exactly sure what kicks it in. Uh, label styles, note, refresh. Now, um, if I close the drawing, so I'll go ahead and save it. Uh, sure, we'll save it there. Why not? Close it and then reopen it, it'll go back to the reference template and that text should change to, yes, it does. So that's how you can go through and make sure that all of your drawings are using the same standard in a situation where you're not sure what the standard is yet. So that's what I got. Well, that's good because two questions popped up. Okay, great. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll ask uh, Nathan's question. Have you ever okay. set up an enterprise CUI? Any tips or tricks are appreciated? Actually, yes, I have. So we use an enterprise CUI. So if I go into the CUI here, you can see we have our main CUI. And I, and I named this one custom. And then down below, we have our enterprise CUI. And this is just the one that comes with Civil 3D. Right, this is the Civil 3D CUI file. And I've made it the enterprise CUI file because I don't want our users changing it. The custom stuff, they can change all they want, but all this stuff, I don't want them messing with this stuff because inevitably somebody will get in here and change something and just make everything fail on their system. Now, one thing we did change, if I scroll down here further, is under the partial customization file. Under partial customization files, we then loaded in our GEI CUI file. So we have the standard Civil 3D file, and for every year, I use that year's version. So for 2024, this is the Civil 3D 2024 CUI file. And the reason you want to do that is because all of those new tools that are in Civil 3D 2024 that now have new buttons up on the ribbon, if I'm using the 2023 Civil CUI file, I'm not going to see them in, in 2024. So you oh, always want to update that. Um, we also updated the workspaces. So the way we have our setup, anything that starts with a GEI is locked down and you can't change it because it's in the enterprise CUI. However, we do have a custom workspace that people can edit as they like. We've got people that still like to use menus and toolbars for some odd, bizarre reason. And that's okay. It's weird, but it's okay because that's how they're most efficient, right? But the GEI ones are locked down. So if I'm like trying to help you out with something and your menus are just all whack and I'm like, I have no idea where to find this. I can always just say, switch to the GEI Civil 3D workspace. It's right there because these are always the same. So this is the way that we came up with keeping people from editing the stuff that they shouldn't be editing, but able to edit their custom stuff to allow them to be efficient. All right, so hopefully that helps. And so, yeah, we just created a, and basically this custom CUI file is basically just an empty CUI file with a single workspace called custom. And I think I copied one of the civil 3D workspaces for it. And, and that's all it is. All right, so hopefully that helps Nathan. Um, any any thoughts on that? Did I go too fast? Did you not understand anything? Did I answer the question perfectly, which is probably the 
most likely thing that happened. David well, had a follow up, which I was talking but muted. Um, have you ever published multiple workspaces, like for different uses, not enterprise and personal? I don't. Mm, uh, have you ever published multiple workspaces for different uses, not enterprise or personal? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, we've got civil 3D one here. We have drafting annotation, 3D modeling, planning analysis. So these are all different workspaces, if that's what you're referring to. Um, or are you talking more about CUI files, specific CUI files for things? Correct. Yeah, so with the 2024 release, we have a, sub so in a program, no, you get an enterprise CUI and then you got your main CUI and, and that's it. So anything you want to customize, you would have to put into one of those, right? So yes, these are the default ones, sort of, but they're not the default ones because if I come up here to my GEI Civil 3D workspace, you can see I have my GEI ribbon tabs in that workspace. So it's not the default one. It is one specific for, civil, for GEI. It is a copy of the default one with the GEI stuff added into it. Right. But as far as the CUI files go, no, you, you just get the two. Now, for those of you that are CAD managers, what I would recommend is because in order for me to make changes to these workspaces, they can't be the enterprise CUI. They're locked down. I'm stuck. I can't do anything. I can make edits to the main one. Now, what determines which CUI is which? Well, that's in your options. Right. So if I go into my options here, <clears throat> under files, uh, customiz uh, yeah, customization files, you have your main customization file and your enterprise customization file. Now, I've just recently reset my CAD, so I don't have it set up the way I typically do. But let's say, for example, I'm constantly bouncing back and forth. So I, I have to come in here, you know, I copy this, and then I come in here, and, and I go to the beginning here, and I paste that in, and then I go to the end, and I cut that out. And then I paste this in, and I basically just swap the two. So now when I hit OK, and I go into my CUI, right, you can see Civil is now the main workspace or the main enterprise CUI file, and Custom is now the enterprise one. And so now I can make changes here. But doing that copy-paste changing constantly is just a pain in the butt. And so what I like to do is I like to create a new profile. So in your options, under profile, you can just create a new one. So I'm going to add to the list the way it currently is. Uh, let's see. It's coming up over here on my other screen. So give me a moment. All right? I'll call this one menu editing. And that's all that's going to happen in this one. All right, so now I can easily switch back and forth between them. I, I want to go back to the way all my users are. I'm in the CUI, or in the, 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 you know, uh, oops. I need to switch that back. All right, so we'll go back to files, customization files. We'll swap those back out again. I love it when I see people use keyboard shortcuts to do stuff like that instead of trying to drag their mouse to the right, <laughs> right. location. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, so now my so now if I switch over to menu editing, I am going to my CUI. You should see the custom is down below here. My civil is up here, and I can start editing these workspaces. And if I go back into my options and switch back over to the civil 3D workspace or profile, profile, you can see now custom is up here at the top and the civil enterprise is down here at the bottom. Now, another thing I like to do is when I'm in that alternate one, the menu editing one, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that one current. What I like to do is I like to change the background color to something annoying because that way I know, ooh, I'm in a, op in a profile that I shouldn't actually be working in. So when I've got the set current, I'll go to the display tab, colors, and for my background color, I'll choose something annoying like pink. All right. 
And this way, I know anytime I see this wild pink background or whatever color you choose, I know I'm in that menu editing profile and not in the one where I should be doing my work. So now when I go back to my options and I switch back over to my civil 3D workspace, ah, that's much better. So uh, David said he, he always sets those uh, file locations on the server and has NTFS permissions chosen to them. You could do that. Um, we don't do any of our support files off of the server. All of our support files, oops. Uh, I think I closed out of the chat. Give me a second here. There we go, okay. Um, all of our, Support files are are local, so we have under the C drive a cat support folder, and all of our paths pass to this location. And you might be thinking to yourself, "But Brian, what if somebody changes something, or what if you need to change something?" Well, when we launch the program, it actually runs a robocopy at first, and so it makes sure that our local files match what's up on the network, and then it launches the program. So we we have a custom uh, shortcut that does that for us. All right, so if I come in here and I launch, say, for example, AutoCAD, all right, you'll see the splash screen. And this splash screen is doing that synchronization. And then once that's done, it then just goes ahead and launches AutoCAD. And you can see uh, the numbers of files that have changed since the last time I've launched AutoCAD. I think so you had David cringing. I think you had David cringing for half a second there when he said you did it locally. He's like, but then you got a status. Oh, yeah. Okay, you are. Never mind. <laughs> Yep. And then Max was going to ask you how to show the enterprise and the options, but you already did because he followed up with, oh, all good. Okay, awesome. So you preemptively answered a question. Good job. Yes. Yes, I love that. So <clears throat> I have a question for Mr. Tomasi. Um, so I've been playing around with the whole Autodesk, uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud or whatever you want to, whatever it's called this week. Um, when it comes to sheet set managers. You up for answering a sheet set manager question there, Brian? Brian? Uh, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was my answer. Yeah, yeah, let's hit it. Okay, so if I go into my sheet set manager and I choose new sheet set, there's an option for a cloud example sheet set. Uh -huh. And I choose next, and there it goes. And then if I want to use a template, uh -huh. it has all these default templates here. Uh -huh. Do you know of any way to get rid of these? Because I don't want my users to be able to use any of these. I want them to use the GEI one. Uh, I haven't really, to be honest, I haven't played with that. But okay. Is there a, because um, um, I believe yeah, there's no way to define the, where the folder location is for this thing to look at based right. on your template. Right. And, uh, and so unless if I wanted to use my template, I have to browse for it. And and yep. then I go to uh, Autodesk Docs GEI and I see all of our projects listed below here. And uh -huh. as far as I know, there's no way to filter this either, like you can through the desktop connector, right? Yep, correct. Okay. It's it, it has been told to me currently, and I'm gonna use the word currently because this is an ever evolving item, so everyone beware. Currently, my understanding is, is you can use a native old DST file as your template. So you can actually just turn on, uh, uh, turn on your uh, SSM detect mode and open an existing DST file using the web app and then just relocate, allocate where your CTB slash STB file is located and where your template uh, page setup override is located even though that, that doesn't really work at the moment. And from there, you will be able to use this. And I have successfully used it from a DST file that was created in 2012. Okay. So that, that kind of leads to my next question. Then. So what oh, I tried... I, I just played into your trap, didn't I? <laughs> no. All right. Yeah. So what, what I tried next was, because I, I didn't like this option for a yeah. cloud example sheet set. I, I, just, I, I don't like that. Yeah. So yeah. I did an example sheet set. And uh -huh. just used ours. Yep, correct. And then I just yeah. saved it to the cloud when it comes uh -huh. time to, to yep. do the save. Exactly. Is there any issues that you're aware of with that? 
the only issues is, is individuals not knowing to go in there and add the uh, the, the look the, the the mapping direction for your CTB or STB, and for uh, the, the other issue is fonts. If you have specialized fonts, it you it doesn't really give you an idea of where those fonts are located nor Does how to access them. No, but your drawings do whenever creating. It's she. It's the line types and sheets uh, and fonts that are having issues on the sheet set manager. And additionally, images, any JPEGs. So if you got JPEGs linked in, I. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird. I was like, why are my line types not showing up? And it's because they were saying that they are uh, line types and line types that have fonts in them, part of an SHX file. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't want to show up right now using the sheet set manager off uh, from the web the web based sheet set manager. So that's when you create a drawing using the sheet set manager. It, regardless, no matter what, uh, if I create a drawing or not, if I've got an existing drawing or I pull a drawing in um, that I had created that's on ACC Docs, for some reason the web based sheet set manager will does not see where your line types are, your any custom line types or any custom SHX files for fonts. Is that when you're publishing or is that just in work when you're working? When you're publishing, okay. not when you're working. When you're working, it, it looks fine. Okay, that, that, that's, that's why I was confused, okay. Yeah. So it's just so, a publishing thing. Yeah, now I'll be honest, I have been with great success working directly using the native sheet set manager off of uh, ACC Docs. They, the problems I have is when you get a lot of people working in it at the same time. Okay. So what uh, what I have do, uh, typically right now, until they get it 100% utilized, I try to have a gatekeeper. I know that that can be a pain, or or I know this is a new concept, but open communications. Hey, no. yeah, no. I know, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, know, um, I don't do that. It's right, exactly right. Uh, yeah, you just contact the individuals. Hey, I'm going to be getting in there and making some changes. Um, that they, they, I haven't tested this yet because I'm too scared. I'm a chicken on this, but uh, the re, the old rename and renumber, right? You love right. that. Well, no. Uh, so the last time I did that, uh, what it did is it, hmm. it 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 created a brand new drawing with a new name and didn't delete the old one. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the process behind it is, is it creates a, a, a dot .ac dollar sign file, deletes, it's supposed to delete the old one, and then rename the new one, the, the ac dollar sign file, the temp file that it creates, as the new name. Now, that messes up your versioning. That messes up a lot of things. So I have people oh, yeah. get used to, yeah, I, I have people get used to the whole, um, hey, if you need to change it, go into, you know, your ACC Docs folder, rename it, open up Sheet Set Manager, right click on the item, go to properties and reset the direct, the expected layout. And it all works. Okay. So, and I'm seeing people are linking stuff in here, which is fantastic. If, if, if this is, I mean, I've been trying to keep up on it, um, but again, there's new stuff coming out every day. Um, so, and I'm unfortunately stuck in the construction world, uh, you know, documentation uh, construction world where I have to produce. So I can't always play with the latest and greatest. Right. So, but th those are my experiences on it. I, app, w once I had it set up and I launched the web app and redirected everything to what I needed it to direct to, uh, it seriously cut my, oh, well, I went from a 19 minute plotting of 75 sheets to 10 minutes using so, the web so, app. I, so I have a follow-up question. Do you guys subscribe to these projects in docs? I'm sorry, I'm not in docs and desktop connector. Subscribe. Yeah. So oh, yeah, you mean the. Yep. So you have to go down to your your um your desktop connector, and you have to okay. open it, and you have to subscribe, so select like projects to subscribe to. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so yeah. We, we. I just want to we, point that out because they changed this when 16 came out. 15 did not have that, and I don't think a lot of people know this, and it really sucks because you can only you can only subscribe to 40 projects. Yeah, yeah the about that limit. I know. Yeah, that well. they're they're going to be removing that limit. 
they're also going to be placing a search function in your project. So that way you can search for the projects in here instead of having to go streaming down. And I have well over a thousand projects within yeah. Tetra Tech that, and so looking at that list from 15.8 to 16, look, that helps so much more because you're only looking at what you need. Now, right. if you're working on 40 projects at a time, you're not the typical user. You would be a CAD manager or an individual that is not really dedicating their time to any one particular project. So you are not the norm. Agreed. So for those so for those of you that are caught up with the 40 projects thing, mm, oh, oh well, uh, that's my thought on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I haven't hit the limit yet, but I'm close. I'm in the 30s, <laughs> so I'm kind of like, oh, yeah. I can probably go back and uncheck these. But for someone like myself, yeah. I get a client and say, hey, I got an issue right. in this one project. Yeah. I don't want to have but to I, freaking check it again and be like, oh. <laughs> but I do want to caution people right here and right now. If you've got somebody on 15.8 and another person on 16.2, you will incur problems. Yep. Plain and simple, 100%. Revit, does, especially with Revit linking, problems uh, and issues. Uh, 15.8, it seemed to work well. 16.2, you get into 16.5, 4 and 5, and it's resolved those problems. So I'd highly recommend moving forward. But uh, yeah, we oh. we use this almost, ex we use this very extensively now uh, because I, it's I just so laugh, much faster. Because a lot of my clients, they don't have it, you know, locked down by IT. So it pops up, hey, there's a new version and everybody ignores it. And then like, hey, all our files are getting corrupt and things uh -huh. are happening. Yeah. It's like, well, did you update that? No. Uh -huh. Oh, I had one client literally last week that was still on 14. It's like, oh. so you have an updated desktop connector in like two years. Okay, well, <laughs> but but Bri Brian's, I'm going to let you guys know. the um, uh, If you're in 14 and you're in 2019, you're okay. But if you're in 2019, 2019 doesn't really play well with 16.5. You need to upgrade. Yep. And, uh, and I want to remind everybody that uh, Autodesk's uh, stance on, uh, you know, their uh, the reliance is, is what uh, th the current version and three versions back. back. Yeah. So 2020 is pretty much your guys' last stop anyways. And 2019 is when ACC docs, oh, excuse me, it used to call BIM 360. That's when it first started coming out. So uh, I would uh, rapidly get off of 2019 if you're going to be using ACC docs and move on to the more latest. And it's all backwardly compatible anyway, so it doesn't matter. Something else while I'm on my little rant, uh, what I love about the, uh, uh, the She Set Manager on the web is it's almost like the publishing background for your AutoCAD. You don't use any processes while it's doing its publishing. It doesn't open your CAD. It doesn't do any of that. Oh, it nice. does it all off of the web. Yep. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, we got some licensing issues that'll take us, take me up through the end of the year. And then after that, I my goal is to get uh, collaboration for several 3D up and running here. Well, if all you right. need any help, I will. Oh my God, gladly help you. It's so fun. Craig, Craig and Todd both say that that Imagine It link that they put in there um, does talk about all the issues you guys were just talking about. Mm. So something cool. to look at that's in the chat. It's set in yep. the web, not honoring plot styles. Okay, interesting. Yep. I'll, I'll have to take a look at that. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, and the and the biggest so issue that, that I there. yeah the biggest issue I have is Sheet Set Manager's page setup override because we use that to. Uh, standardize how we plot and it does not have that incorporated yet so i've told autodesk we won't be going to it until they put that in there so hopefully that lights a fire all right so new question from todd follow up okay. to your reference templates have you experienced any defect with reference templates i've tried to use them each year since they came out in 17 i find eventually results in my styles becoming corrupt and have to abandon it i have a theory that it's sensitive to latency which could be causing it a bit Nonetheless, res nonetheless, resulted in me not having confidence in the feature. Love the concept, though. That's a great question. I have not experienced any defects with reference templates. Um, that's because I, I really haven't used them yet. <laughs> uh, this was really the first project that I decided to use them on. And I don't have a lot of experience with them yet. Um, so I set this project up and I actually set it up for another team. So I'm not going to be like the designer on this project. Um, so hopefully they don't run into that, but uh, it's good to know. I appreciate the the heads up on that, Todd. But So, no, in, I, I so in January, when you come complaining about your project being corrupt, Todd's going to say, yeah, told you so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and like he should. 
but well, yeah, if, it is, I, I, if it is a latency thing, that does make sense too. So, so many things get corrupt due to latency. Yeah. All right. So, question from Beverly: Any idea of how to get Civil 3D points exported to Google Earth without exploding them to AutoCAD entities? Export KML does not work because they are already Kogo points. The, I have yeah, no idea. Now you want to export to AutoCAD so that way, and it creates another file. But no, you, there is no way to bring them out. Okay. Sorry, the, uh, KMC only recognizes native AutoCAD um, entities. We've we've actually used a new tool where you can yeah you export it onto and then you download the app and so you put it on ACC Docs and as you're walking the site with your phone you get to see where you're at on your drawings. I Absolute. saw a video by Jeff Bartle just recently. Oh yep. That. Ah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. If you have that link, I would link it in the chat because that is one of the biggest. We were out in the field on a, well, one of our larger projects. And uh, basically, I exported it as a KMZ, and they were walking the site, seeing exactly where their pipeline was going as they were walking. No, that, that, that's beautiful. It was invaluable. Yeah. So uh, yep. a couple of comments came up in the Q&A about AU. So, uh, so Todd, you can't see this, but Joe and put in uh, said asked if you're going to be at AU. If so, he would like to connect with you to see that issue with the uh, reference template. I'm assuming Joe. Um, and then Todd says, "Will you guys be at AU? If so, meet up. I would love to meet up with y'all. Um, I will be there. So I fly in on Sunday. I should land about, I think, around three or four on Sunday. Um, I have an expert elite meeting that evening." Um, and then uh, AU is always so busy because we got so much stuff going on. Um, but yeah, I, I, I will be there. If you see me, please come up and say hi. I, I love talking with folks. It, at AU, it's like I'm with my people. I, I, I go to other places and I'm like, ooh, they're talking about sports again. <laughs> right? But AU, I'm like, I'm like, it's like I'm home. So I, I, I love AU just because I'm with all the, the awesome people that I know. So I propose dressed. you guys meet up at the sports betting bar. So if your people aren't there, you'll still feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, hit me up in the app. We'll meet up at some time. We'll have lunch or dinner or breakfast together sometime, someplace, somewhere. Um, I'd love to meet up with y'all. So there, there is an app. So get downloaded on your phone and uh, hit me up. John Mayo says he'll be there too and love to meet up with anybody as well. So maybe yeah. you guys need to... Connect each other all in the uh, app or just, you know, go on Twitter and hashtag civil chat. There you go. So a lot of you are saying you're going to be there. So yeah, hashtag civil chat and AU, and then you guys can maybe find each other that way. All right. So only one more question. So hopefully this is a question that's going to take you 20 minutes. All right. Otherwise we're going to have to discuss AU or something. <laughs> we have been working in the new pressure pipe runs and have found you could not add a bend slash, I can't tell if this is PI. PI or PL to a curved PI. section of the pipe. Of Do you have a workaround? Um, no, no, never tried that. No, that's 3.14. <laughs> cool fun fact, my, my pin number for my, uh, the, my ATM card, uh, the last four digits of PI is my pin. So. Yours too? Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Let's uh oh this is AutoCAD. I don't want to work in AutoCAD. I'm working civil 3D. There we go. So the home pipe network. First off, I, I I would like to see a curb pipe being manufactured. That's RCP or uh ductile iron. Love okay. to see ductile iron ductile iron curb pipe. I'd love to see it. You can just curve it at the bend. I don't want to model every <laughs> joint because I'm not going to tell the contractor where to put each joint. That would be silly. Uh, there it is. Well, it popped up on that screen. So we'll call this one, I don't know. A little chat. Pressure. Um, use the water. I still have yet to finish my parts list for pressure networks. Getting so close. I don't have any of that. We'll go ahead and select OK. Um, let's see, we'll do add a new pipe run. 
Uh, I think I just did that. And then we'll start here. We'll go, uh, we're really zoomed in. So we'll go, I don't know, say 20 feet. And then put a nice bend there. And then we'll see for curve. It's a nice short radius just to piss off Brian. Oh, yeah. All right, and then we'll go back to straight. <laughs> something like that all right okay and so the question is can you add a pi to a curve uh, i don't know why you would want to that wasn't the question the question is can you well it goes on the principles of alignments but i don't think that alignment would work in that fashion yeah you, you could break it into two curves perhaps Um, either that or the, go, either that or go the one under follow up is to go under a crossing pipe. Oh, you're, you're talking, talking vertically, profile. not yeah, profile. you're talking okay. vertical. Uh let's create a profile. Pipe run profile. Uh don't have a reference profile, we'll go sure, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Profile view. What you can do is you can create your own vertical profile and then tell it to go to cut links and then use the cut links and tell it to follow your proposed vertical profile. New profile. Yeah. And that would make it appear at every cut link that would bend to that vertical profile as well as it possibly could. Okay. And what it'll do is it'll use the cut links at every joint and make the def necessary deflection underneath. But it will not curve the pipe to the best of my knowledge. Yeah. Pipe run. Now, in gravity systems, you could grab that center diode and pull it down. So that oh. just broke the pipe run into two runs. Mm -hmm. So I got to run over here and a run over here. And now, in essence, I have a PI. Can you merge pipe runs after the fact? There you go. So that's a horizontal curve, though. I'm sure you could do something similar with the vertical curves. Now, is this, I got a question, is this to actually um, deflect to uh, just go deeper and go underneath using a a curved radial? Or do you are you looking to create vertical bends through? Right. Because there's a different Vertical way to bins. do that. Vertical bends? Ah. Yeah, something. Add something there. Add something there and then add something there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right? That's not curved. Well, no, he did say vertical bends, right? Right. I wonder if that answers the question. We have a dynamic block that we use to place it every you know, crossing and then drop at the necessary distance. And then this dynamic block has the vertical exaggerations to it. So it gives us precisely where those bends need to be. Nice. Max says he does too. Awesome. Yeah, I figured the general general populace would think along that line. So do you find that the requirements throughout the state, throughout the country are the same as far as the cover and the extensions and the angles and things? Yeah, well, well, I mean, okay, so Colorado, California, Washington, and Oregon are all like 1.5 feet. Mm -hmm. um, clearance, depending on the type of pipe you're, you're going against, if it's a similar pipe, I think you only need about a foot. Uh, if it's sanitary to water, you'll want at least a foot and a half, sometimes two feet. Um, it also depends about the water table as well. Like in Florida, they have a low water table, so you either have to case it or you will have just to pr to right. eliminate any type of seepage. Okay. And it's above and below, so there's a different criteria to go with it. Yeah. At least that's my finding. Well, here, here's what I would love to see, right? So, you know, there's a a crossing pipe right there, 
Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a gravity pipe or a pressure pipe. I don't care. Um, what I would love is a button up here that says create lower. <laughs> and then you select the, the cross, yeah. you select the pipe run uh -huh. that yeah. you want to lower. And then you select the one that it's intersecting with. And then a, just a simple dialog box pops up and says, okay, what's your clearance? Uh, yeah. I want what's your one and a half foot clearance? What's the extension beyond the outside edge of the outside pipe? I, I want another uh, foot and a half out there. Uh, what angles do you want? I want 45. I want 22. I want sweets. Maybe I yep. want sweeps on this side and 45s on this side, mm -hmm. right? Um, be and then dialogue. if that pipe changes, the lowering Go. would change with it. Uh-huh, yeah. Sounds like yeah. something a computer should be able to do. <laughs> uh, look, you're putting us out of a job, all right? So stop with these ideas. Joel <laughs> wants you not to have a job. That's that's basically where you're at. You don't want us to have a job. <laughs> I mean, right. how else am I going to tell the engineer it's going to take me four hours to do this? I mean, seriously. <laughs> right. But yeah, I, that's what I would love to see something yeah. like that. And, and this is, I mean, long, Cause... long time ago, I put up a post on the forum. See if I can find it. Civil 3D 2020, uh, 2030. There we go. Yeah. So Civil 3D ideas. And if we go to top voted. John says you're expecting that when we can't even draw a curb yet. <laughs> <laughs> Newsflash: pipe doesn't curve, man. <laughs> right. So I, I've, I've still got the the number three top rated vote, and this is on the look, yeah. back in almost ten years ago, right? Um, okay, eight years ago. But anyways, it was a long time ago, and so eight, eight a lot three of quarters. this stuff. Yeah, a lot of this stuff has been implemented. I think a lot of this, what we've got uh -huh. now, came from people voting this one up and saying, yes, I want this. But one of these in here uh, is the ad lowering. They did not implement that. So I've been wondering. No, they did. A, a this category has been marked as implemented. See, the problem is you added a whole bunch of things in there. So if they do one, they can make yeah. it so nobody else can vote on this and say, nope, that's been implemented. We yeah. did one of the 30. <laughs> one of the 30 items. Yeah. I guess when what making these suggestions, we got to use the kiss method. Yeah. Well, most of it has been it. This this was basically me ranting. I, I and then I, I think the reason that I got it, so many votes is every time I would teach a class and I would do pressure pipes, I would be like, "These suck. <laughs> How do we change them? Go vote for this." <laughs> <laughs> so. You've comment saying that you should be going and talking to to Tim Yaris about this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I, hopefully, I'll get to meet up with Tim. So, if if y'all don't know, Tim Yaris is the Civil 3D Product Manager. I believe is his mm -hmm. title. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He he is the head of Civil 3D now. Uh, Dave Simeone moved on to more of an infrastructure global type of a thing, where Tim is specific on Civil 3D. At least last time I talked with him, that's the way it was. Is that that or an that or Andrew. And agnostic. How do you, I always have trouble with his last name? So Tom says, not a question, but civil three 3D related along with AU. There will be civil quizzes at the engagement space near the Expo Community Zone on Monday, one to two Vegas time. Have some fun and win some swag. Nice. Where did you see this? Oh, there it is. Sorry. In the Q and A. Yeah. Okay, I was looking at it. Chat. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I, I'm planning on being in the the engagement space at some point, so we can meet up there. Um, yeah, come come take some quizzes. See, see, uh, maybe we can do some stump the chump while we're there as well, just kind of off the cuff. Those are always fun. So back when uh, Augie was doing the the top dog competitions, I, I I won that one year, so that was that was a lot of fun. And then yeah, I, I took the test again the following year, and I got the best score, but I didn't win because I'd won the previous year. I, and I, <laughs> I also think they were upset that I worked for a reseller at the time. They're like, that's, that's not what we want, Brian. So <laughs> I think that might also have something to do with it, but I'm not. Yeah, I think I think that year I lost to you by four points, if I remember right. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I love uh, Re Revit tried copying that at the RTC conference, and since it was the RTC conference, they called it the Revit Top Cat which went along with the conference name. So they did the similar thing. 
Okay. They, yeah. did it, they did it one year, and Autodesk gave an oh. iPad away, and I won that year, and that's the iPad my kid uses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife still uses the laptop I won at a at the top dog competition. It's a piece of junk now, but oh my god, that was so long ago. I know, right? All right, that is all you have, and you're going to finish right. nine minutes early. All right. So yeah, as far as AU goes, like I said, come come chat with us. We we're just people. Um, don't don't think of us as celebrities because we just a, are not. We're just trust me, like he is not civil three D, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and I, I geek out on this shit. So come talk with me. I love talking about this stuff. Um, yeah. That's all I have. So yeah, like I said, hit me up on the AU app. I've already got mine downloaded. So you, we can start making connections now if you want to. Um, and like I said, I'll be flying in Sunday around three or four, I think is when it's supposed to land. I, I don't remember exactly, but we will see you there. And Joan, I, I gotta say, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, it, for those of you that don't know Joan, Joan is in Australia. So what, what, what time is it there, Joan? Go back six hours and four today, so it is six a.m. Yeah, six a.m. All right. Well, thank Depending. you for joining us, man. We, I, I do appreciate. It. I'm looking forward to seeing you again at AU, and hopefully, it'll be better than last year. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be better than last year, right? I, what happened last year? Where was it at last year? Uh, it was in New Orleans. You know. Oh, that's right. It was that month. It was that's in the murder right, capital. It was that. in the murder capital of the country at that point in time. Yeah, that's right. I did go last year. I did, I'm not going to be able to make it this year, but yeah, that's right. I forgot oh, about that. Yeah. Well, I got <laughs> to go to. Uh, I, I went to what inside the factory, so that was a bonus. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It it was so horrible last year that I just said screw it and I ditched all the classes because it was so hard to get in and out of classes and I just stayed oh. in the entire conference. <laughs> it was bad. It was, it was pretty really bad. bad. So I, yeah, and I'm then, looking forward to another good one. And I love how they w ran out of food of beans and rice. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was so bad. But yeah, no, like I said, it, back at the Venetian, I'm looking forward to a great conference. Um, I almost didn't go this year, but I was like, no, nah, I'm going to go. So, but uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody. We'll talk, see you next month or next week, perhaps, hopefully. And uh, make sure you bring, you know, tell your friends, tell your family about uh, Civil Chat. Bring everybody that you can. Bring lots of questions. And we'll talk to you then. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye, all. Bye, all.